Hi, Simon Walker here. I'm going to show you how to use Red Giant Primat Kia, a powerful tool for working with green screen or blue screen footage. The updates to Primat Kia 6 include a speed boost over the previous versions, with GPU acceleration making it up to three times faster than Primat Kia 5. It also has a number of key updates to the functionality and the interface, including the new ability to apply a core mat to make the inside of your key solid whilst keeping fine details on the edge, essentially two keys simultaneously. Primat Kia 6 also sits alongside existing installations of previous versions of Primat and is compatible with After Effects and Premiere Pro. The interface is split into sections allowing you to define a key, adjust a mat and remove spill from the background. The Define Key section has had a significant update with a more intuitive and easier to use layout. Hover over each of the tools to reveal useful instructions and hints about how to use each control. This makes it much easier to navigate the interface and adjust the key, as well as discovering the uses of each tool. Primat Kia is particularly good at keying difficult shots, the ones with transparency or fine hair detail, which is why it's been used on so many movies, TV shows, commercials and music videos and these interface updates make it even more intuitive to use, especially as the controls have the ability to see which tool is best for which task. In terms of sampling the background, the fastest method is to use Auto-Define Key, which assesses the overall frame and chooses the median value from the background. It runs a smart algorithm that determines the background screen colour automatically. Auto-Define Key gives excellent results and reduces the amount of time taken to pull a key. You can also set up custom samples with the point and rectangle tools, in combination with the matte background and foreground tools, which I'll cover shortly. The correct matte tools help you refine the key and manage background spill. You use them by sampling directly on the image itself, allowing you to concentrate on key areas. The spill sponge tool sponges away colour spill from the foreground by sampling directly on the image, allowing you to focus on any problem areas. It's a good idea to try and use the spill sponge first, then follow up with a fine tuning operation if necessary, with the spill plus and spill minus controls. These fine tuning tools are quite subtle, so you may have to make multiple samples before you see a result. The spill minus tool is useful if you've applied too much spill sponge and added in magenta or yellow tints into the image as a consequence. The spill correction control defaults to 50% as this gives a better looking result in most cases, but it's useful to drag the slider to compare different percentages of the spill correction. The Restore Detail tool is useful for restoring lost detail in semi-transparent areas like veils, as well as hair and smoke. Sample those semi-transparent areas first, and then move on to the Detail Plus and Minus buttons. Again, these fine tuning tools are also quite subtle, so you may have to make multiple samples before you see a visible result. You can use the matte blur and matte shrink sliders to fine tune the matte, especially if the key starts to reveal macro blocking or artifacts in the matte. Note that you have to be careful as these sliders erode and blur the edges of the matte, so small amounts are better, especially to avoid affecting important details or edges. The matte sponge control is useful for fixing areas of the matte which may have turned transparent. This sometimes happens as you continue to work on the matte, and some of the previous processes can add elements for the transparency back in, for example on the face of the model in this shot. To correct these, click on the unwanted grey pixels and they will become fully opaque, whilst still retaining any spill suppression that you previously applied. The Decrease Opacity tool is great for adding transparency into more opaque areas of the image, in this case the veil. It's a nice way to visually manage how transparent certain elements are. And you can apply it to both the foreground image and the matte. Primat Kia 6 is also available in Premiere Pro as part of VFX Suite, amongst other tools such as Chromatic Displacement, Null Light Factory and Optical Glow. Primat has an identical interface in Premiere Pro, with the ability to apply the same functions in the same way, such as spill sponge and decrease opacity. 
The update to GPU processing should also make it easier to scrub the timeline and get better playback speeds. A good tip for creating a garbage mask in Premiere Pro is to add it to the opacity section in the effects control panel. This can be handy if you need to edit out background elements, such as the tracking markers in this shot. In addition to the auto-define key method, you can use the matte background and foreground tools to manually sample the background and foreground. This is useful if you have a range of colors in an unevenly lit background. Using the Select Background tool allows you to create a dot trail, so you can set up a custom sample of a specific area. This lets you make a more flexible and accurate sample area, and allows you to make a broader spectrum of samples. Alternatively, use the Rectangle Sample style for areas of even color. This method creates a median sampling, and can help to reduce any noisy pixels in the background. Note that if you don't have the Primat Kia selected in the Effects Controls panel, you may end up moving the position of the clip in the comp. So make sure you have Primat Kia selected. Primat automatically selects the effect when you choose a selection type. Once you've made a sample, it's essential to view the mat, which I like to do with the split screen method. And now you can start using the other tools to refine the key. Use the clean background tool to refine the background selection, being careful not to sample over any of the foreground area. Depending on how well, or poorly, your chroma key scene was shot, there are usually unwanted noise areas in the mat. The Clean Background tool lets you quickly sample the noise to remove it. Click and drag to sample pixels in the background that look like noise. The Clean Background tool will turn them from grey into black, making the noise completely transparent. I find the split screen function to be very useful for comparing the mat and the comp. You can refine the mat with the Clean Foreground tool, which is essentially the opposite of Clean Background, sampling the darker areas in the foreground until they are completely white. Avoid sampling any transitional areas, where the foreground and background elements are going to be blended together, such as the hair in this example. You may find that you have small pockets of grey to correct, so keep selecting with the Clean Foreground tool or also with the matte sponge tool. Depending on your subject and the prevalence of grey areas to fix, for situations like this, it's worth using the core matte function to speed this process up. Core matte is a new feature in Primat Kia 6 that makes the inside of your key solid whilst allowing fine details at the edge. It essentially allows you to have two separate keys applied simultaneously. This is useful not only for speeding up the keying process, for example if you have multiple grey matte elements to clean up, but is also very useful when you have projects with different keying elements to fix, such as solid edges and wispy hair. Applying core matte fills in the holes in your matte, allowing you to then concentrate on the edges. Use the core matte blur and core matte erode sliders to refine the edge until you're happy with it. Keep comparing the matte and the comp whilst you're fine tuning the edges, and also scrub the timeline to sample multiple frames of the comp to compare the results. It's often necessary to apply two keys on shots which combine hard edges with fine transparency, such as cloth or hair, but Core Matte can help speed up this process and sits alongside the other matte tools in Primat that give you a variety of processes to set up effective mats and keys from a wide range of green screen footage types. You can also adjust the matte with the histogram tools in the gamma section. The histogram lightens, darkens or adjusts the gamma curve of the matte using a standard levels interface. I find this useful for tweaking the background. As usual, take care to balance adjustments for the background so that they don't significantly affect the foreground. The edge replacement tools let you recolor the edges of the foreground using a number of different methods. Color lets you select a solid background to be used in conjunction with replacing spill. This is especially useful when you have light colors in the foreground. Complement, which is the default, uses the complement of the backing screen color to replace the spill. Essentially, Primat finds the matte edge and then uses the color of the corresponding pixels in the background element. This mode is best used when you need to retain maximum detail. 
Defocus uses a defocused copy of the background image to determine the spill replacement colors. These replacement colors are selected from an area of the blurred background that corresponds to the related area on the foreground. This mode works well on diffuse transparent objects like glass. Defocus often provides more natural looking results. And as with many of these settings, experiment and then choose the one that gives you the best results. A tool I find extremely useful is Spill Killer. Blonde hair shot on a green screen can be tricky to key, especially when warm lighting is used. But Primat can detect these subtle differences well. Even so, you'll most likely have a degree of colour spill to deal with. Spill Killer mathematically analyzes and corrects for colored spill on the foreground without harming the original color of the pixels. Spill Killer can also correct many spill situations that might otherwise be difficult, such as semi-transparent areas like fringe and motion blur. Usually, just turning this on at its default values instantly removes green spill. But experiment with the strength slider and the color bias slider to suit your shot. There are additional advanced controls for fine-tuning adjustments across the RGB channels. I've also found that an instance of Colorista from Magic Bullet Suite using the green pill HSL controls to desaturate green colors works well for removing any remaining stray green pixels. But don't perform color correction on the original before you pull the key, even if it's log footage, as you may lose edge detail depending on the color correction you add to the footage. Primat does a much better job of analyzing and keying the image as the first effect on the shot. A pre-processing effect you can apply before the key is Denoiser from Magic Bullet Suite, which helps to remove video noise and macro blocking caused by compression algorithms in the source format. The de-artifacting controls in Primat can also help remove blocking around the edges of the image depending on the compression used in the original clip, with algorithms specifically designed to address problems when keying objects brought about by compression and reduced color depth. Once you're happy with your key, the next stage is to composite it more naturally with the background. Primat Kia 6 is part of the VFX suite, and in this suite you have access to advanced compositing tools in SuperComp, including intelligent light wrap, haze, edge blend, edge erode, and diffusion, all of which help to composite your shot convincingly.